um, so we have this follow-up trial underway. Interestingly, there are four other, four additional autism trials, all using Avmacol. And, and this is, you know, if it doesn't work, I'm to blame because I, I identified it as something that, that looked like it was the best of, of what was out there, mm -hmm. and I got the I mean, company to agree. I mean, this is something that's available for people right now. It's available, and we right. know that it, that it produces sulforaphane, and we know that it's a decent product, and it's, you know, it's been through all sorts of quality assurance. But so, you know, when, when people who came to us and said we'd, we'd like to do an autism trial, would like to model it after Andy's original trial, uh, essentially try to replicate the findings. We, we want more of that sulforaphane that you produced for it. And my answer has had to be, I don't have any more. And I'll show you, as my witness, I'll show you our freezer and show you that we don't have any more in our clinical freezer. So we're, we're, we, we just can't produce it anymore. And so we had to yeah. suggest that people switch to something, to something commercial. So four other studies one of them has finished uh, its patient accruals at um, UCSF, um, and we're in the process now of evaluating biomarkers, and they're, they're using metabolomics to evaluate biomarkers. So they're looking at small molecules produced by the various metabolic pathways that are either induced or upregulated or not. Um, and hope to be able to make some correlations with symptom reduction and um, biochemistry. Um, there is a trial just starting at University of North Carolina. Um, there is a trial at Rutgers that's, f uh, I'm not sure how far along they are, pretty far along, I think. And there's, and all, all, all three of those trials are about the same order of magnitude as our original trial, 30, 20, 20 to 50 patients or subjects. The, the other trial is in China, and there are, uh, I'm going to get this wrong, there are either 120 or 180 subjects, and that's just starting. The study drug or supplement is there, um, and this is, this is at an autism, a school for autistic kids um, in Changsha, China. And you can, you can read the descriptions of most of these trials, I think all of them, uh, on clinicaltrials.gov, which is the government's database for clinical trials. Um, so again, all these studies are looking at biomarkers of inflammation. As you say, IL-6 um, is one of the key markers that people are looking at, uh, COX-2, TNF-alpha. Um, the, the supposition is that those markers are going to go down um, the supposition is that markers of NRF2 activation are going to go up and heat shock protein markers are going to go up. We'll see. Right. Well, I mean, it's been shown in, in people that don't have autism that, that are given sulforaphane, at least. I guess it yes. may depend on the dose, but that has been shown. Yep. Um, the heat shock protein, that really caught my attention. I came across it um, when I was reading about sulforaphane and how it can be neuroprotective for Alzheimer's disease, yep. Parkinson's, and even Huntington's. And these are all you know, diseases of protein aggregation, of which heat shock proteins play a major role in uh, repairing, you know, and preventing both. They do both. So yeah. um, I was very yeah. surprised to find, I guess not that, it wasn't that shocking once I found out that sulforaphane activates, because it is a stress response pathway. Heat shock yeah. proteins do respond to stress, mm -hmm. like heat stress. So I guess I wasn't that shocked, but I was, I was a little surprised at first to yeah. see that it plays a role. And Possibly that's how it's helping prevent and protect against some of these neurodegenerative diseases.